Well, good evening and welcome to the World Gone Mad edition of uh, the old-timey cassette collecting vlog run by yours truly, the Illuminatrix, Cousin Scotty Smitty. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, I, this is evolving. I'm finding that I'm actually enjoying talking about this hobby that I got because there's a few other people that have the same hobby, so that's kind of neat. The other thing I'm finding out is that, well, I mean, I'm kind of getting into a niche. I, I've decided that I really don't want to listen to 80s and 90s rock and roll anymore, really. Um, I've had enough of that my whole life. Uh, it's just the same. It's getting the same as like with classic rock, too. It's like, if, if you listen to the last episode, I was talking about how the boomers just kind of took over and trashed everything and decided that they wanted their music and they were going to have it and that was it and we lost the prior and our generation I didn't really like a lot of their late 80s 90s stuff I, I don't know whatever it doesn't matter point is I'm not here to pass the generations right now everybody although I like doing that it's a, it's a fun activity what I what I'm coming to the conclusion is I want to listen to some older stuff and I like the old timey stuff and I like the old pre pre boomer rock and I like into the 50s and the 40s and I like different styles of music that isn't rock and roll and I came in came in to focus one day when my eight-year-old said I said what do you want to play she goes I don't know something something upbeat something good she goes but no rock and roll I hate that stuff I'm like really wow wow anyway as so now I'm into this stuff and I'm into the old tapes and so I'm also learning how to make the channel go, or how I want to do these things and I was previewing, opening up and I'll do some of those too because I've still got the mystery box of tapes and I've still got a few other, I got a, that garbage bag I still haven't gone through. That's how big of the backlog is. I mean, I listen to, when I come home at night, maybe I'll listen to two tapes a night by the time kids go to bed or, or whatever, I'll listen to maybe two or three tapes a night. And on the weekends, maybe half a dozen a day. And it's just a backlog and I want to listen to them all. And I'm actually recording a lot of them, making a digital copy. Maybe I'll put them on the archive. Like, like that VHS vault. Did you guys see the VHS vault? That was a really cool thing. Shout out to those guys who, who pulled that off. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. I, I can't wait to dig into that. Anyway. I'm running across some old tapes and I'm running across some interesting things and I'm, 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 I'm starting to get into this collection thing again. So anyway, remember Johnny? Johnny Horton. Actually, I, this lighting is just horrible today. I don't, I'm going to bat. Yeah, hey, how's that? That's a little bit better. I got to just hang this in the air. But okay, so Johnny Horton, we remember him. And there's two things we remember about him. He just, just stared at us that whole time when we were fixing the pads. And then he was the one that had the big brown fuzzy pad that I tried and I said it sounded like crap and then I put it in here well it still sounds like crap but it doesn't sound as bad it sounds just like a poor quality tape and we talk about this who the hell was golden circle from Stanford Connecticut and what is this because it's a reaper engine and anything so all right that's fine well there we go and so as I'm digging around in my stuff and I'm coming up with some things and I'm pulling tapes out slowly but surely, what did I find but, oh, here's Johnny, but the wrong Johnny, that's Johnny Cash. Hi, I'm Johnny Cash, uh, which is interesting. So what's, what's that all about? So obviously, and now here's the part where I'm lazy. I haven't gone and actually done some internet sleuthing yet, but, Again, 1985. Now, what's interesting here is this both Golden Circle Records, Stanford, Connecticut, 1985. This one is a sealed tape, and it's printed with one font. And this, and, and it reminds me of old old dot matrix printer fonts. Uh, if you remember those, this is definitely like a this is definitely a, a mid 80s computer printout typewriter font. But this one, this tape is a different tape. It's a different, you can tell it's different plastic too. And it's, I love these old tapes where you actually have the, the screws in them. Now some of them have a, a nut on the other side. This one's just got the screw in there. So um, 
that's really cool. I like I like tapes like that. And the the quality is also poor on this Johnny Cash one, but and it's also a reissue. And it's I don't know. So now I guess I've got a collection. So now I'm looking for more of these stupid things that look like this from the Golden Circle Records because now I've got a collection going and this is how we do collections. I'm not looking for the rarest or the most expensive or chasing artists or anything, but I think this is kind of neat. Okay, so let's see if we can find any more of these. How many more of them are Johnny's? Have you guys ever seen any of these? Let's make comments, okay? Let's make comments. Uh, shout out to Cassette Culture on Reddit, so talk over there too if you don't want to make YouTube comments. That's uh, the other place where I kind of like make these videos for because they tolerate my weird hobby because they have it too so rock, rock on guys all right so i want to show a couple other old tapes that we have oh before we get into this this is swing dancing slow i'm sorry slow dancing not swing dancing slow dancing now i got this at i guess the salvation army takes some big things and only puts out so many at a time and I so I went over or maybe I missed this and I grabbed it uh, two weeks later but remember I said to, we were talking about the senior prom and I had tape two and tape three or maybe tape one and tape three or whatever but uh, no it was tape two and tape three and I was like well I guess now I'm looking for tape one well so a week later I go back to the Salvation Army to get to buy more tapes I get slow dancing and I open it up and guess what I found senior prom now tape one so i got the complete set which is cool i don't know where slow dancing went now technically i should get rid of this and now i've got a an orphaned tape i'm just gonna leave it in here who cares right you're basically gonna get the same thing i but i'm happy that i got that and then this is gonna go in the pile and uh, it'll go out we got our flea market canceled so well, I don't know. I'm going to figure something out. If anybody wants to buy any of these things, let's talk. We'll make a package together, and uh, we'll send some out, and we'll consider some kind of donations or something. I don't know. i got to get them out of here, too, because i got too many of them. I was looking forward to a little Frank Sinatra. Everybody loves a little Frank every once in a while. So I open her up, and... This is 1983 Capitol Records. Tape is kind of gross looking and it sounds like garbage. It's horrible, it's no good. And the only reason I wanna show this was that Capitol Records, now we talk about this, like where are all these record labels now and what is this and we talked about Columbia House and the different qualities of tape and what you could expect and what's your return on it and was it just better off to get some cheap tape or was this the end of a run or something because apparently there was you know they ran these masters 10,000 times and if you got 9,900 you know the last one 9,999 before they changed the master out because it wore out that would suck so Anyway, Capitol Records, if you were, if I was a serious collector, discerning, or if these became expensive or anything, I would probably avoid these, and that's just what I would do. Now, what do I do with Dead Cassette? This will go in the Trashola. This gets in a box, and this goes with my J-Card collection. We'll go through those on a video sometime. I got a pretty big pile of them. Actually, I'll show them off sometime, and then if anybody needs them, we can talk. I sent some out before to some people. And that's kind of cool. And they're like, hey, I need that. I don't have that. This goes in a box, and it, they come in handy too because these things break all the time, and you really got to keep cases on things. So I just wanted to show, and this goes... That's the way it is. I mean, I guess I could keep the tape for an art project. I used to, when I was a kid, I would, if a tape broke or whatever, I would keep the tape. And I, you can only really do this once, but I'd keep it in my pocket. Like, you know, kind of put like a piece of little scotch tape on it so it didn't unravel. And then I'd keep it in my pocket. And then when it was time, when it was time, I'd undo it. And, it's like, and that was cool once. And then it was done. Anyway, I wanted to show two tapes that I thought were very interesting that are old. 
This is Kaiser Walzer, 12 Walzer Zum Tanzen. Uh, and if you're not confused yet, I don't speak very good German at all. Uh, Walter Zum Tanzen, die Wiener Volksoperum Orchester Limited, Hans Hagen. Okay, it's in German, all right? That was my point here. There we go. This tape is so old, it doesn't even have a Phillips head. It's flat head machine screw in there, not on the backside. Um, oh, where is my big pen? Look at that tape. Look at that gross tape. Oh, yeah, and you got it. It was kind of chunky there. But anyway, it's an okay tape. Uh, it plays okay. I got a recording out of it. Uh, I think we're getting a little hot, it was a while ago. Anyway, copyright 1973, but it's not a C, it's a P. This is in stereo. Teledec, Telefunken, Deca, Schlottenplatten. I'm not making that up. <laughs> there you go, Schlottenplatten or whatever. Uh, Schlottenplatten, GmbH, Homburg, Homburg, okay. I, Untenberger, Und Luschenbring, Vetebring, Karin, Vibron. I'm, I'm not even, it's made in Germany. Eh, okay. And so anyway, this is not cardboard. This is, th this is more of a paper. So it's not exactly, it, it's, it's not thick. It's more of a paper and it's the waltzes. And uh, what else did I wanted to show in here? I think that was it. Just that there, that's a very old, Old set, 1973, from Germany. Made its way over here. Um, and you can tell it was definitely, it was a nice, it was a high quality recording. Last one I want to show you tonight is Jim Reeves, my friend. Now we've talked about Jim Reeves. We've got a lot of Jim Reeves floating around. But this one actually stands out pr interestingly enough. Now this is RCA. And if you remember, we were looking at Roger Ritiker. I still didn't throw him away because I can't right now because whatever. See, this is the, what I was talking about with the paper on it. And then this one is actually printed on there. That's 1975. We looked at this. Now, this Jim Reeves one is uh, printed in the USA. Let's see. Okay. Here, it's, it's 1972. Okay. So, which is pretty cool. And... This is cool. This is just cool inside. It says it's a pocket-sized pleasure, a wide variety of music, pop, rock, original Broadway cast, movie soundtrack, classical, country western from the world's greatest roster of recording artists. Now, if you look, it's actually the same one. But if you go inside, and this is what is different. This was just, you know, the code, the the lost code from wherever, but this this right here this is a, this is only a partial listing of cassette tapes available. Check your local dealer for a more complete listing. Uh, this is, there's so little on cassette right now in 1972 from RCA that they're just going to list it out. Uh, Perry Como, this is great. It's from Perry Como, uh, the, the Friends of Distinction, the Globetrotters, Waylon Jennings, Glenn Miller Orchestra, the Monkees. It's all over the place. Here's a couple of Jim Reeves. The Youngbloods, Glenn Yarborough, I don't know who that is. Then you get original cast and soundtrack with Exodus, Fiddler on the Roof, Hair, Hello Dolly, uh, with two different Broadway casts, all over The Sound of Music. I actually have the reprint of that from the 90s. It's the original soundtrack reprinted, remastered um, on cassette. And then Red Seal with Fiddler and the Boston Pops, and a Chicago Symphony, Philadelphia with Rubenstein, Prince Elias. So, it's, they're listing out these crazy, weird, and I've seen this in a couple other, a couple other J cards inside, advertisements for the, for the other ones. Now, here's the other thing. Now, this is a 1972 tape, and it was, it's definitely listenable. Uh, if you look at this, it's, oh, did I change that? Is that mine? Oh, no. This is a weird fuzzy one. That's what I'm trying to... Yeah, so I don't know what kind of fuzz that is in there for the felt, but it's it's different than a normal 
don't know if you can see that or not, but it, it's it's like a almost like a foam. But whatever, this was good enough to listen to, and it actually sounds really good. So this is an old tape that plays well. Now here's the interesting thing that I it's just very weird. Um, there's two songs in German, or is there one in German and one in French? There's definitely a song in German, I think. And then maybe they're both in German. It's just kind of weird. I this is I, I don't know. I I don't know why he's singing. He's crooning in German on on that tape, but it's cool and it was cool to listen to and I'm glad that this tape exists so I just wanted to show you some of these old tapes now these tapes are gonna go into the done pile and they're gonna go on their way actually I'm gonna hold on to these because they're a collection actually I'm gonna hold on to no, slow dancing is gonna go anybody anybody collect old tapes anybody want up for a trade anyone wanna, anyone wanna support this channel and buy one of these for a couple of bucks plus shipping whatever anyway try to stay sane out there i actually am getting into this a little bit and i've got another pile of interesting tapes to show and here's a preview of my next video oh yes so plus like i said we're still processing lots of tapes stay safe out there Listen to some, listen to some tapes and uh, be good.